Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution? Or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist, and I am based in Singapore. My company, uh, I'm from Eros Coaching, and that's erscoaching.com. Today we are talking about um, tantri- tantric uh, escort, sex work that is profiling healing. And uh, I've just been away in India for the last two weeks, and I've been in training. Uh, lots of people think that I'm, uh, I was on holiday. No, I was in training. And because of the, of the bad uh, internet connection, so uh, for one week, the, uh, the previous week, uh, the week before, I had uh, a replay of my previous show, My Best uh, Sex Stories. And then last week, I had my friend, um, Dr. Tangelina Kuskut, uh, come on to the show. And today we're talking about Tantric Escort, a sex work that is profiling healing. Today we have EJ Love who will be sharing with us her experiences working in the sex industry and how she evolved her escort work into a sacred sexual healing practice, Tantric rituals and practical sex coaching that is profoundly healing for her clients. She is passionate about sexual healing and how it can awaken and heal us on deep levels. And you can read more about the work that she specifically does as a sacred sexual priestess at soulpriestess.com. A little bit more about EJ Love. She's a love and sex coach, sexual healer, tantra practitioner, and sacred sexual priestess, as I mentioned. She's a regularly featured expert on Soul TV and helps people to heal and empower themselves in love, intimacy, and sex. Speaking from her own personal experience, she travels the world sharing her message through speaking events, media, radio shows, and writing articles, books, and blogs. She's on a mission to impact the world and to help people to deeply feel the love that they already are. She's the creator of Naked Woman Rising Movement, where women from all around the world are coming together to rise up and own all parts of them that have been shamed. And you can find this at NakedWomanRising.com. Her book of the same name is coming out uh, in 2017 next year. And you can connect with EJ on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat under the username EJ Love Angel. And, uh, of course, she also has an official website, which is EJLove.com. So welcome to the show. Thanks, Martha. Thank you so much for your introduction. That's a cool. Thank you, and uh, it's not often that uh, it's not often that I meet somebody who's so honest about um, um, being involved in um, sex work. Uh, and uh, could you tell us more about how you evolved this um, sex work into providing something that is more of a sacred sexual healing service? Yes, so Martha. So it would have been about so be going now where I went through. Well, I think I've been doing my self that I just can do for myself sexually. So I really always consider myself, I guess, a fairly sexual person. And I've been, I've been working in this school for three years. And I was, into a, I was in a relationship and I got to the point where I didn't actually feel like having sex with my partner. So, you know, so often quite common and a lot of them come to see me would see me because getting any intimacy at home. And I think to be in a woman's position that does want to have sex or a lack of sex drive. So it was happening for me um, outside of work with my own partner. And when we ended up sitting up, I, well, I, made this, I said to myself for a long time that I would never be a bruised woman and that I didn't want to be like that. I couldn't understand it. And then it happened to me and I just knew I had to do something about it. So I ended up going to sex coach who was a friend of mine, and she uh, did a centric massage on me and realized that uh, I had all these blockages in my body and that, uh, yes, particularly my sacral chakra, there was all this heavy energy 
speak more than men than I'd been with. And yeah, it's this, it's just this disconnection from my body. Like it's like I was physically there, but my like my spirit and my soul or energy was out of my body and not there while I was having. But I didn't miss the time actually. So um, this is when I started getting into tantric So when she did that for me, I was like, ah, oh, this is this is what I'm meant to do. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do for my clients. I'd also been working as a, I started probably about a year before that, on through a bit of a spiritual awakening, and I started um, doing energy healing, I started doing Reiki, and I had this part of my life where I was doing sex work, and this other part of my life where I was doing healing, readings, and this was a spiritual part of my life, and I kind of thought they were quite separate, and I wanted to myself, oh, and I felt like my in the sex work was kind of like damaging myself in a way, but then... I realized and I just and I was like, oh, no, I'm very jealous. They're totally good together. I haven't understood that yet. Um, I just thought to me, well, how can I bring these two things together and make my work, my first healing? And so this is when I started to introduce tantric practice. I started, first started with tantric massage. And then I went to, I just went on a mission. I basically was doing workshops and courses and mentoring and, um, all sort of stuff to bring the tantric practice to my work. Firstly, we're working on solution of myself, and then everything I started to learn for me and what worked for me, I started to bring that to my clients. And so it was an amazing journey to go through, and it just continues to evolve constantly. Great. So what I'm hearing, um, the, the sound seems to be breaking up, and um, there's a time okay. lapse. So what I'm hearing from you is you experienced a tantric massage and um, it activated your chakras. You were already on a spiritual awakening journey and um, you learned Reiki. And uh, in order to make your work more fulfilling, you decided to go for more trainings and mentorship and decided to um, incorporate this um, as uh, your work uh, offering tantric um, escorting. Am I right? Yes, yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, um, it does definitely sound uh, unique because um, with uh, escorting being very much uh, taboo, and um, um, it's it's good that you found some way to make this work for you and also uh, provide more of a, a sacred uh, experience. So could you explain a little bit more um, what exactly tantric escorting is about? Yeah, so, I mean, I find out that I, I, I'm whole, like I don't actually have sex, I can try to sex very often at all. Um, most of my rituals, um, which I'll get into later, um, are just more about uh, intimacy and creating connection through different types of practices, taking and, and not so much coming for the actual sex part. But with the tent work and I can actual escorting session, it really is um extended session where it's about build up and it's about not on that goal. It's not like it's, it's where most of my clients used to come and build well, gee, interesting enough, a lot of them came from the in company and connection, but um, there was always this sense of um, a goal, like there was this coming into and she's going to do like an erotic massage, or you know, there's a sense of goal of let's have an ejaculation eventually. Let's, you know, there's this real sense of a few, you know, you went to see, it's it cool. The core idea was that you were going to you know, ejaculate basically at some point, however that means. Um, whereas my focus in tantric escort world is not necessarily about, you know, having focus on that goal, it's about a journey and it's about um, really building a connection and what I find is that sometimes actually I had a digital sex a couple of weeks ago and I love this term which I actually came across at a retreat that I did, which is called Man's heart open, <laughs> and I literally felt that in the moment when I was doing the sex with clients, that there was a 
beautiful heart connection that we built up between us that when he was penetrating me, it was like we were penetrating, he was penetrating my heart and I was, in turn, I was opening his. And it was really beautiful. It would spend, you know, a good hour and a half or you know, even two hours before that, before we even got to that part. So, you know, these are through different types of connection practices and really being, um, you know, so much out of the physical part of it, focusing on building up a physical energy, working with the like an energetic penetration. So, that, and other differences also is that, um, what, what I find is that I really get to honor my boundaries. So, with a client's past as a normal escort, they were really coming in to fulfill their needs. So, would it, however, that might not be And sometimes in the business, I don't quite want to please me. Um, and so, this, they come in and we sit down and we discuss boundaries, discuss consent. And we say, okay, well, this is what, this is, I, and I, I have to listen to my body. And sometimes my body might not want to do certain things. And this is what I do as a sexual priestess. She always, you know, sexual priestess always honors boundaries. So from moment to moment, I'm consistently honoring and communicating that um, and teaching them how to tune into my body as well. So I don't need to do anything that I don't want to do like, because I'm getting paid for it. Whereas in the past, I, will, I would say, well, this is my inclusive service and you're allowed to do all of that. Sometimes maybe my body didn't want that particular service with person. Maybe my body didn't want to do those things, but I did it anyway because that's what that my set my office my service said that it offered. Um, and also because I've become really numb. Like my body had basically disconnected and I was not even really there. And so they were doing stuff and I, yeah, I would just kind of let it happen um, because that was, that was my job. Um, but now it's like I'm fully, fully there, I'm fully getting pleasure, I'm fully getting into it, um, I'm fully surrendering to pleasure and and I'm fully embodied, so I'm blood proof in my body. But I have to honour it, otherwise I'll go out of my body. I have to honour it and do things that I want to do. So we have a break and we'll be um, coming back later to uh, speak more with DJ. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by Rain and this station. Uh, 
Hi, welcome back to today's show. Uh, this is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and I'm from Arrows Coaching. That's erscoaching.com. And as you can hear just before the break, that uh, the recording, the sound quality with EJ Love is uh, quite pretty bad. And so what I've decided to do is to invite her to come on when she's back in Australia. She is uh, currently in Bali, and that might explain why the internet connection is pretty bad. Uh, so I will be getting her to come back onto uh, the show um, next year, and uh, we'll find a time slot. Um, she will be uh, sharing her experiences uh, working in the sex industry and how she has evolved her escort world into a sacred sexual healing practice with tantric practices and practical sex coaching that is profoundly healing for her clients. If you're interested to find out more about her work, you can go to soulpriestess.com, ejlove.com, and as far as her future book and her movement uh, called Naked Woman Rising, uh, so you can go to nakedwomanrising.com. And um, I will have her back, but the recording is uh, not good. I can hardly understand what she's saying. And uh, so, uh, you know, it would just be better to have her come back uh, on at a future date. So for the rest of today's show, I will be doing a little bit of ad lib and improvisation, um, starting from um, talking a little bit about uh, what I've been doing the last few weeks and why I've been missing for the last two weeks uh, from the show. Um, well, I was uh, in Philippines, as uh, you may know, and I um, had uh, my friends uh, take over the show so that um, I could uh, focus on all the different trips that I had planned, the first one being to Philippines, where I had um, my um, friend, uh, Averill, who uh, shared in episode 98 um, how she came up with Scarlet Queen, uh, which uh, is her BDSM Roleplay YouTube channel, which has received over 2 million views and released uh, two trailer um, novels, uh, one called Red Hourglass and one called Blue uh, o o Ochre. And um, she is a pretty uh, well-known figure um, on YouTube and uh, she's Singaporean Chinese. So when I met her, I was really intrigued by her work and I decided to invite her to uh, host an episode by herself, which she, she kindly did. Um, I was uh, at that point uh, on my way to Philippines uh, with my teacher, Laurie Handlers, and uh, we spent the week with her friend uh, in Philippines just hanging out. Then the week after, she was, uh, uh, Laurie Handlers was then in Singapore running three events, and uh, while she was in my uh, bedroom studio, we did episode 99, Getting to Bliss in Your Life. And in that show, she talks about how people can have more than ordinary sex. And uh, it covers how people can use sexual energy to make themselves happy and beyond. So this was on December 1st when uh, episode 99 happened. Then when I got to India realized the internet connection was really bad and so emailed the studio and told them to replay my best sex stories the previous week and last week for episode 100 I had uh, my colleague Dr. Tangelina Kuskud talk about beaten to success uh, sorry beaten to greatness turning adversary into success in that show, she talks about how she and her sister were sexually abused and how she feels about um, sexual abuse and uh, what she has to say about it and how one can turn any hardship as a stepping stone to success even in the, in the most traumatic of experiences. That was episode 100 last week. And you can find all my episodes by going to Google and you just key in Arrow's Evolution at a glance, and you'll be able to um, see all the shows at one glance, literally just scrolling down, 
and uh, it links uh, you to every single episode. So I'm going to invite um, EJ Love to come onto the show at a future time because of time um, constraints and um, because the sound quality is not great. And it's just better for, for her, really. So tune in, uh, stay tuned to my future episodes where that's going to be happening. So in the meantime, I um, talked about um, what I've been doing the last few weeks. And um, so I talked about Philippines, talked about being in Singapore, and now I'm going to talk about me being in India. So I went to India with my teacher, Laurie Handlers, and uh, together with three other Singaporeans, we went to um, the Easter conference that took place for the first time in India. And um, after the conference, we then uh, went on to the Easter Level 1 uh, training. And um, Easter stands for Institute International, sorry, International what does ISTA stand for? Let me look it up very quickly. Uh, ISTA stands for International School of Temple Arts. And it's the level one that I attended. It's, it's the spiritual, sexual, shamanic experience. And um, I attended the one in India. And uh, every ISTA is different because they have different teachers coming together to facilitate this at different venues. And of course, the people make the experience different. And um, because I've attended several different kinds of trainings, uh, what was covered in is uh, a lot of it was not new to me. However, there were some new things which I appreciate. And also, um, each time you go through a training, you... Um, taking different things and so it deepens the training and the knowledge that I have received. So I would recommend ISTA to uh, people, especially those who have been on the path of uh, doing inner work and personal development and who are interested in the link between sexuality, spirituality and shamanism. There, there certainly was a uh, um, shamanic um, teacher who was there at that training and her name is um, Estera. Um, she's she's really good at what she does. I learned a lot from her and I'm really glad that I had the experience of having her as my teacher. Then of course the other person was uh, Laurie Handlers who is my teacher. She is um, an international Tantra teacher. So she, her emphasis was on Tantra, as Tara's, um, Saraswati. Her emphasis is more on shamanism. And then there's another lit faculty. Her name is Andrew Barnes. And um, I knew him from a previous experience as well. And he's more on uh, background on massage. And uh, he's also a sex educator like myself. And so... It was good that um, I had the experience there. It was intense. Things were coming up left, right, center with different people. And uh, it was a very powerful uh, seven-day training. And um, this um, description you can find by going to schooloftemplearts.org. You can subscribe to their mailing list. And from there, you'll be informed in their monthly newsletter of upcoming events. And um, they have it in North America, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand. So definitely um, do check out uh, what I've been up to. And it is uh, ISTA, International School of Temple Arts. And uh, every... Um, session is different as I mentioned and you really want to look into the trainings um, that were offered by each of these teachers and see if you resonate with them uh, in signing up for trainings. Uh, what you also want to do is you, you want to subscribe to their mailing list, you want to follow their work, you want to find them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth 
look at their trainings, look at their reputation, and then see if um, you feel that um, this teacher will be able to guide you. It's kind of like a rapport thing. If you feel that you like someone, you are more likely to be open and receptive and soak up all the benefits of the training that is being offered. There's also a certain synergy when people come together. So feel into it when you, you, you think, oh, okay, I can make those dates at this location. Feel into it. Feel into the teacher. And then uh, you, can, you can think about it. You can decide. So I'm just going to their online calendar right now. Uh, just as I'm speaking about it, and like for instance, my teacher Laurie Handlers, I know she's going to be doing one in Costa Rica. And let me let me look at it. Okay, so it's January 30th to February 5th, and it's going to be in Costa Rica. So my teacher Laurie Handlers will be um, be the lead faculty for that. Besides having uh, seven-day experiences, they also have shorter experiences. They have, for instance, like festivals, and they have um, gatherings. They have um, shorter workshops that I don't see on their calendar right now, but I know that that does happen. They have, um, um, for instance, like... Uh, in February 10th to February 12th, they have Eden Festival of Conscious Sexuality and Relationship that's happening in Auckland, New Zealand, for those of you who are interested. So it's kind of a nice thing to be able to combine a, a holiday travel with learning. So I'll be sharing more um, after this break. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Carrie Ann Larson. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OhmTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in a beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1 800 342 AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. And welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. Welcome back. This is um, Dr. Martha Tarali. I'm a clinical sexologist. And uh, in today's show, um, we had EJ Love, uh, who is a tantric escort, talking about sex work that is profoundly healing. And uh, because of the bad sound quality, we decide, I decided to um, have her back at a later date. And uh, you can still find out more about her work by going to soulpriestess.com, ejlove.com, and also nakedwomanrising.com. The Naked Woman Rising is her movement and future book called Naked Woman Rising, where women from all over the world are coming together to rise up and own all parts of themselves that have been shamed. And just before the break, I was starting to talk about what I've been up to the last few weeks. 
and I talked about um, going for Easter training. So I'm going to talk about um, the different other kinds of training that I've attended, just so you have an idea of what's available out there, and perhaps you will be able to better decide for yourself what you can do or uh, plan towards doing in 2017. Um, I've also attended uh, a very profound training called Sexological Body Work, and then subsequently I also attended this other training called um, Urban Tantra. So I want to talk about these two trainings so that uh, you have a better idea of um, uh, what are some of these trainings that I've attended. Uh, so I did my doctorate in human sexuality in uh, the Institute of Advanced Study of Human Sexuality in San Francisco. I know it's a mouthful, uh, that's the name of the private institute, uh, Institute for Advanced Study of Human Sexuality, and uh, that's where I got my doctorate in human sexuality. Um, and uh, it was being offered by my institute at that point, um, Sexological Body Work, and sexu Sexological Body Work was created by Joseph Kramer, who started the New School of Erotic Touch, and he was also the previous founder and owner, uh, he sold the business, uh, called The Body Electric. And um, Joseph Kramer is a pioneer in uh, erotic uh, massage and um, um, body work, and this really ar arised from the uh, AIDS epidemic where people were afraid of um, touch and uh, um, uh, getting this um, deadly disease and didn't know what was going on. So he came up with um, the whole idea of how we still need to be touched regardless of where you are at. And that's how erotic massage um, came about. In addition to his work, he just built on it. And in sexological body work, it is really meant for people who are um, uh, venturing into the career of um, providing erotic touch as a healing modality. And I went for this training realizing that um, I wasn't going to use it. I wasn't going to use touch or nudity in my work, but having had that training provided me an insight of the value of this um, rising pool of uh, professionals who do offer this service of, with the fullest integrity um, because of the training that I've gone through. So I, I know this quite well. In order to be identified as a sexological body worker, is an actual term. In order to be identified as a sexological body worker, there is no two-way touch. Uh, it is one way. They always wear uh, gloves and, or some safety barrier if, if needed, like a dental dam. So there is no exchange of bodily fluids. What they do is they may massage someone with the intention of healing them, moving sexual energy in their bodies, for instance, from their genitals towards their heart, uh, providing them with um, um, aesthetic, uh, blissful experiences um, that will create safety with clear boundaries for them. Um, this can be profoundly healing um, when people are in relationships and um, they sometimes find it difficult to ask for what they want because for fear of hurting their partner. But when you go for to a provider, you can be very clear about your boundaries. You can ask for what you want. And the uh, focus is entirely on you. And, of course, by somebody who is um, trained and experienced with working with bodies. Um, this can be profoundly healing. So I went for this training and... Um, it was, uh, there was this online component and then there was this uh, intensive uh, component there as well. And uh, right now the training has already been prolonged. So it's actually become a much more comprehensive program. It's a longer program. And um, the last I looked, it's now a six month program that will really prepare uh, people who work with people. Uh, most of these people would be energy workers or tantricers or Masseurs, and uh, they they would embark on this um, with the whole intention of moving into this field. 
is also now a very expensive program. So I, I had attended this uh, sexological body work training and using the training, I'm able to uh, teach the techniques that I was taught and uh, teach a lot, of, a lot of the things that I was taught actually in my work. I would say it is um, one of the, if not the most difficult training I've ever attended in my life. More difficult than even my doctorate, to be honest with you, simply because it really uh, works your mind, your heart, your body. There's a lot of uh, emotions that comes up. I happen to be in a group where um, they were very triggered, and so there were emotions uh, flying left, right, center. People were breaking down and crying every second. And so it, it, it made it even more intense for those people uh, like myself who are empaths, who are very, very sensitive to energies and emotions of people. So that's a sexological bodywork training that I've attended. For those of you who are interested, you definitely want to look it up. You just go to Google and uh, look up sexological bodywork and uh, you'll be able to find it. They have it. Um, in Australia and in UK. I know this because my good friends, Adij and Uma, are running it. They, they are highly trained and skilled and they have a really good reputation and they offer it. I know that my friend, Captain Snowden, who I had previously in this show, um, in episode 53 in, on January 14, um, building your sexual solidarity team with that that uh, doc, with Dr. Captain Snowden um, um, was on this show, and uh, he is um, the one who's running sexological body work in Europe, I believe. And uh, you can find this episode by doing a quick Google Arrows Evolution at a glance. You'll be able to find. Uh, Dr. Lee M. Captain Snowden's uh, episode. So I'm very fortunate that in that training I met Deej and in that training I met Captain. Uh, Captain was also doing his doctorate in human sexuality alongside me and so I was very very honored to meet these people who are now really pioneers and leaders of um, this movement sexological body work. So look it up if you're interested the website is sexologicalbodywork.com. The other training that I've attended was uh, Urban Tantra. I was interested in Tantra. I didn't really know what was Tantra. And everybody assumed that I knew Tantra because I was a sexologist. A sexologist is somebody who has had the academic training when it comes to human sexuality. And an academia, academia, as you know, knows a lot about books and literature and scientific studies, and they don't necessarily know a lot about how the mind and body works. Um, and definitely in my training, we didn't learn Tantra. So after graduation, when everybody assumed that I knew Tantra, kind of pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> That's when I decided to take it on upon myself to learn a little bit more about Tantra. I went for some Tantra training in uh, Koh Panyan. It was really pretty disappointing the way it was conducted. So I shall not mention where I went. <laughs> and I was then interested in um, um, this person who has a very good reputation. I kept read reading that I must read her book. And the book was Urban Tantra. And this person is Barbara Carellas. So she had this... Uh, Urban Tantra professional teacher training, and that's when I was um, very intrigued. It was being offered in Australia, and so I went for the training. And I would say it covered many components that sexological body work already had. It was different in the way it was presented, and there were practices in it that were different from what I have experienced. I would say there was probably only one very profound practice that I experienced, which I should not share. For those of you who are interested to go for the trainings, uh, I should never um, really cue the mystery of it, other than tell you that it's a really good um, place in which Tantra and BDSM meets. 
um, Barbara Carella uh, has a very good reputation of making sure that these workshops are gender and sexual uh, preferences friendly, that um, they don't really focus so much on genders and uh, they welcome people of all sexual orientations as well as um, uh, sexual identities, which means um, it includes people who are uh, transgender and people who identify as um, different in any way. And uh, that creates a very safe space for anybody. And you can find uh, her upcoming events uh, at barbaracorellas.com backslash upcoming dash events. Um, again, Barbara Carellas, that's C A R R E L L A S dot com backslash upcoming dash events. You can subscribe to her mailing list. She is also a teacher that I really respect, and I've had her come onto my show as well because I love her so much. It took a really long time to finally be able to get our schedules to meet, and I had Barbara Carellas on this show on episode 61 on March 10 and uh, you can find this episode as well by going to Arrows Evolution at a glance on Google and you'll be able to find the link where at a glance you will be able to scroll down and see every single episode that I've had. Um, Barbara Corellas also has a shorter experiences now for people who are not interested in teaching and she has one called the Urban Tantra Experience all named after her famous book, Urban Tantra. She has the Urban Tantra Sacred Sex for the 21st Century uh, event, which is like a one-day event. And she speaks at festivals. She has online, online webinars, workshops. And uh, she is um, the sex educator, in case you don't know. She is the go-to sex educator that Louis L. Hay uh, recommends. So Louis L. Hay works primarily with, primarily with uh, Barbara Corellas. So do check out her work and I'll share more after this break. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And welcome back to the last 15 minutes of today's show, Arrows Evolution. And uh, as I have mentioned, um, I had to cut short the interview that I had with EJ Love because um, the sound quality wasn't good. She's in Bali right now, and so I'm going to have her back and uh, finish the episode properly uh, in a, at a future time next year. And we're talking about perhaps um, January or um, let's see how it goes. <laughs> So in today's show, instead, I started talking about the trainings that I've been attending. I've been to uh, Easter in India, had that training, and uh, just now I was talking about the other trainings that I've had, uh, sexological bodywork and urban tantra uh, primarily. And uh, I guess for the na- next 15 minutes, I would like to talk about some other trainings that I've attended. And I'm doing uh, this in view of the fact that uh, we're coming to the end of 2016, 
And uh, a lot of you may probably be thinking about what are your plans and resolutions for 2017. And uh, life is, is just an ongoing journey and we don't know what we don't know and we will always be where we are at um, unless we go for more uh, learnings. And this can come in the form of books, on videos, it could be YouTube. There are lots of free resources out there nowadays. Um, and it's sometimes important to get uh, recommendations from people whom you trust. And I hope that I can be a resource person for you. So just now I was talking about um, Urban Tantra. Um, they, they do have uh, non-professional training related uh, events. And then I talked about Sexological Body Work, which is quite an intense program, which is now six months. Um, they do have um, erotic uh, videos that you can learn from and you can find them by just doing a quick Google search. That's the new school of erotic touch. You'll be able to find all their online videos that you could subscribe to. Um, and right now I want to talk about this other training that I attended two years ago and it's called the Art of Feminine Presence and I've had my teacher onto my, dis, um, onto my radio show um, um, uh, in episode 8, um, that's March 5th, um, last year I had uh, Rachel Jane Grover, my teacher, uh, talking about feminine presence and spiritual and she's the founder of the Art of feminine presence and in this training there's actually two levels that's level one and two and I I saved money for two years I went to Melbourne Australia two years ago attended the teacher training realized that this uh, practice is going to change my life and have been running weekly classes um, at the um, in Singapore and I will be offering a preview as well as a full day out of feminine presence practice circle uh, in uh, January that's January um, January 8th and if you're interested you can go to my website and look at all the events that I have that's arrows coaching backslash events and while you're there be sure to subscribe to my mailing list uh, I will also be in Sydney um, next year I'll be there January 22nd to February 22nd. I'll be speaking at the Really Good Sex Festival for the second time. And this time I'll be presenting at five different uh, workshops. And later that uh, month, um, end of February, I'll be presenting, participating at um, their first ever retreat called Sexual Wilderness a Retreat that will be happening at Blue Mountains. So instead of coming back to Singapore, I decided to stay there for the full month. So if you're interested um, to find out about my work, come for some of my workshops, um, do check out my website, Arrows Coaching backslash events. And of course, also look at whether you would be interested to attend a really good sex festival that is happening the last week of January. In the Art of Feminine Presence, I basically learned what feminine really means and it's not really about um, being weak or frivolous or um, bimbo-like. Um, there's a lot of wounding when it comes to the feminine, both in men and women. When we talk about feminine, we're not talking about gender, we're talking about the quality of feminine that resides in all of us. However, the art of feminine presence is really designed more for uh, people who have a vulva and so there are practices that are suitable for men um, and there are practices uh, that are suitable for people who have a womb. And so I'm very passionate about the art of feminine presence because it took me a long time to really get in touch with what it means to be a woman, what it means to be feminine. And uh, you, you may want to check out episode 8. In episode 11... Uh, March 26th last year, uh, I interviewed uh, one of the lead teachers called Sally uh, Reeves Onway, Conway, and uh, she talked about receptivity um, that might be one of the things that is stopping you from uh, blocking you. <laughs> and so in that episode, she talked about the importance of being able to receive. 
and how you can increase your ability to receive more of what your heart desires. And that is, um, you can find this by doing a quick Google search, that's Arrow's Evolution at a Glance. So this is um, another training that I attended, the Art of Feminine Presence, I saved money for it. And um, there's another training that I'd like to mention for those of you who are interested. And that is about how you can become a sex coach, sex expert, or become a trainer. And you can go to sexcoachu.com. That's one word, sex coach, you, with the alphabet U at the, at the end, dot com. And it is um, run by my teacher, um, Patty Britton, and her partner, um, can't remember his name right now, sorry. <laughs> And so let me let me look into it because I'm just at their website. So that's Patty Britton and uh, Robert uh, Dunlop. And Patty was on one of my episodes, episode seven, the five keys to a happy sex life. And uh, you can find this by going to Arrow's Evolution at a glance, Google it, and you the link will pop up. Um, when I was going through my doctorate in human sexuality, one of the things that I wanted to accomplish was um, to become a, a sex certified sexuality educator. In order to do that, I needed to have supervision and I needed to find somebody who understood my background, my training, and uh, preferably came from the same institute. And um, Dr. Patty Britton was one of them. She's also the pioneer of um, the person who talked about sex coaching and what it meant. She brought um, together sex therapy and uh, sex coaching, um, sorry, sex therapy and coaching, and then made it into sex coaching. And sex coaching is, a, is quite different from sex therapy. In sex therapy, a lot of people who are sex therapists have a background in psychology and uh, are, are psychologists and uh, they have masters in psychology in order to be a psychologist and then they have a minor in sex therapy so that's how they become sex therapists and what happens with sex coaches uh, or sexologists like myself is that we have training specifically in human sexuality like myself i have a doctorate in human sexuality so for us uh, our training is um is in the academic study of sex um, and from there we we need to then learn how to work with clients so people might go into different kinds of uh, trainings in order to be a good facilitator and moderator and educator and so we might go through the humdrum of um, learning education and um, then in my case coaching so I also have a certificate in uh, life coaching I also have a certificate in um, practical counseling, and right now I'm doing my master's in counseling. So that the training really doesn't never end. There is a difference between coaching and counseling. Counseling deals a lot with the emotions and what the person feels in their heart, and from there allowing them to find the resilience they need and answers that they need from within in order to move forward. Coaching very much acknowledges the past and what people have experienced. However, for coaching is very much more forward looking. And so in coaching, um, they focus on where you're at, where you want to go, and then breaking it down into smaller steps. That's uh, coaching. So Sex Coach U focuses on uh, giving you the training where you need when it comes to sex, giving you the training when it comes to coaching, combining the two, and uh, making it work for you. So for those of you who are interested, exploring, what, um, um, whether you want to be a sex coach, you want to be a better educator, you want to add this on to your trainings, then uh, this could be something that you may want to look into. So once again, the website is sexcoachu.com. So these are some of the trainings that I've attended. There are also many other trainings that I've attended before. And I just want to mention one of them that is totally unrelated. Um, and it's called In Inner Voyage. So Inner Voyage offers online meditation training and I I went for the um, training in order to be a meditation teacher. You can find it at innervoyage.com. It's based in Australia and you can get a diploma level certificate in teaching meditation as well. 
We're almost coming to the end of the sh today's show. If you're interested in finding out more about different kinds of trainings and also maybe book recommendations, uh, you can always read on Facebook. That's uh, arrowscoaching.com. And I have a page, Arrows Evolution, uh, for those who are interested to receive the latest news about uh, every single episode of Arrows Evolution. And if you have a guest that you're interested for me to interview, uh, books or resources that you're interested me to for me to feature uh, on this show, be sure to just drop me an email and uh, I will definitely be interested to hear from you. And that's uh, drmarsley at arrowscoaching.com. Um, a lot of people may not know this. I'm available via Skype. And uh, recently, I've revised my rates because in view of um, traveling more, 